Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. It's that time of the day where I bring you African Art Talks with Eric. And I'm so excited to come your way this afternoon. Let's take the intro again whilst you call your friends to call a friend, to tell a friend to come on board so that we talk about African art. Let's do so. Hey, 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 welcome back, welcome back. Today is gonna to be a great day. And as I said, it's a day where I talk about all things African art. And I'm so excited to talk about this guest of mine today. I've been looking for him for a very long time because I follow him a lot. And I've been following him on Facebook for ages at his work. It's so brilliant. Anyway, my name is Eric Amwaka Boadu, And today I'm bringing you the African Art Talks with Eric. This is a show where we talk about all things African art. We educate, we bring our own story, and we tell it from our own point of view. That is the whole essence of this program. And let me try and get the guest on, and I'll allow you to also share this video. Uh, if you are on YouTube, try and subscribe to the channel, and let me try and put the link there for those of you who are watching me from Facebook that would like to share the link from YouTube for others to join. Let me do so. I'll put the link right there so that you just call all your friends to come over to watch this show. So if you are on YouTube, go to www.youtube.com as usual. Username is emap75, E-M-A-B-75, or just type in Eric Amwaka Bwadu and you would find me right there so that you can follow uh, what is happening here as we talk about African art. So let me just bring my guest in. Let me make sure that he is online. Okay, let's do so. So he's getting ready to come online. But in the meantime, it's education, education, education. And today, as we started last time round, we are still going to talk about the Edinkra symbols. But let me make sure that I've got everyone on board. So Douglas, hey, Family by Nature. If you haven't followed Family by Nature on YouTube, do well to follow Family by Nature. And I've got my good old friend, um, Gabriel Insnard. So let me talk about Family by Nature just a little teeny weeny bit. He's a father of seven and he's taking his whole family to Ghana. What a story. Go to YouTube, follow Family by Nature, and you'd know all about that. I've also got my good old friend from Maryland, Gabriel Isia, joining me from all the way from Maryland. Gabriel, hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining this afternoon. Now let's go to Facebook and make sure that we've greeted everyone from Facebook. Uh, let's make sure that we make people feel welcome. Let's do so. Bear with me one second. Let's log into Facebook. And then we say hello to everyone who has logged uh, uh, into this program and is following me. So right now, my, I've got my good old wife, Marie, who is cheering me on every single day. Thanks, love. And then I have got five different shares already. Wow, that's amazing. We've got Don Turner. Don Turner is watching right now. Don, thank you so much for tuning in this afternoon. Everybody else who's watching right now, say hello in the comment area and I'll give you a good shout out. It's all going to be about African art. And today's guest, I'm so happy to bring him on. I just can't wait, but I need to talk about the Adinkra symbols. So let's dive in. Adinkra symbols from Ghana. And these are symbols that, you know, Ghanaians use a lot. It's been around for a very, very, very long time very very long time and these days is being used on everything let me take the banner away everything from t-shirts to jewelry to t uh anything anything at all and the history of it is that there was a king in the 
Ashanti or the Bono region, which is still part of the Akan people. Uh, his name is Ken Nanakojo Ajman. And back in 1810 to 1820, and as you watch this program, I'll tell this story over and over again so that we all know what it's about. But back in the days, he started designing these symbols, brilliant symbols, and he started teaching other people to do the same. So over the years, his son took over, and it has been in our culture, the Ghanaian Akan culture, for a very, very long time. So these days, you can see it on clothing, you can see it on T-shirts, you can see it on earrings, all forms of jewelry. And, you know, it has become an international symbol representing Ghana. So let's take one of them and learn more about it. Today's one that I want us to look into a bit more is this one. This particular symbol is called the Akofena, Akofena in the tree language. But in the English language, it means the sword of war, the sword of war. And this symbol represents courage. It represents valor, heroism, and anything to do with being brave. You know, the cross were a popular motif in the heraldic shields of many former Akan states. Now, in addition to recognizing it as a symbol of valor and courage, the sword can also represent a state of authority. So this is, wherever you see this sign, it means we're talking about what? Power, authority, uh, valor, courage. So that is what this symbol is about. And that's what I wanted us to talk about today to do with the uh, Dinkra symbols. Every single week, we take one of them so that we learn more about the culture of the Akan people. I'll do that for a, a while, and I'll go to another country in Africa or a state or a city in or a tribe, so to speak, in Ghana, and I'll take some of their symbols as well. Because in Ghana, we've got so many tribes, and each of the tribes have their own way of communicating. Some people communicate with drums. Can you imagine? Drums. And then others also communicate with symbols. Some also communicate with uh, different forms of language. So we'll look into all these. And then I'll go to other African countries. In Africa, Africa is not a country. Let me stress, Africa is not a country. Africa is a continent. We've got 54 countries. So I'm going to delve into each of these 54 countries so that we learn about their culture. We will learn about how we do things, how we tell our stories through creativity, through art, through uh, our culture of music, dancing, so many forms of expressing ourselves through spirituality, for instance. So let me read a few more comments and then I'll bring my guest on today. So family by nature, Douglas behind this channel says powerful. Gabriel Insia says he's watching all the way from Maryland. And then we have David Okanze. Hi, David. David, I hope you're doing so well. David says hello. And then we've got Senior Albert, as usual, says, I'm here as usual to listen attentively to my good compatriot, Senior Amwaka Wedi. Senior, salute to you. Hope you're doing well, Senior Akasala. So great, great, great. We've now talked about the Adinkra symbols. Let's now move to the main topic for today. Today's guest is somebody that I've been following for a very long while on Facebook. Um, I, I know his work. And I'm very much more inquisitive to know how he creates his work because I really admire the realism of it, the stories that he tells within his work. He's no other person than Titus, Titus Agbara. And I'm going to tell you just a little bit about his bio without giving uh, so much information so that I allow him to tell his own story about himself. So he's somebody who was born in Lagos. Uh, he did art from the, the onset, and he came to the UK uh, later on in life. But from the UK, he's partaking in so many credible art shows to the extent of the fact that he's even partaking in Sky's Portrait Awards, you know, that the, the portrait uh, show of the year, the portrait artist of the year show, as well as the portrait landscape show on Sky. And I, we all saw him on TV, those of you who haven't, Today, I'll be showing you what he did on TV. And I'm so excited to bring him our way because he's exhibited around the world as well. He's exhibited in Nigeria, he's exhibited in Ghana, and he's exhibited in the UK. Maybe he's exhibited somewhere else, he will tell us. 
Now let's make him feel so welcome as I bring him on screen, Titus Agbara. Hey, 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 Hi. how are you doing? Yeah, good evening, Mr. Ayer. Good evening, good I'm evening. Yeah. So finally, I get to see you, and I've got your beautiful yeah. daughter in shot. Yeah. He, he, she oh. can join us. She's oh, a creative yeah. as well. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> What's so thank you so much for honoring this invitation and um, coming to grace my show this afternoon. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So tell us a bit about yourself. If somebody wants to know who is Titus, who are you? Okay, uh, thank you very much. My name is Titus Agbara, and uh, people that know me from from my childhood level, they used to call me Festus. So I have similar representation of name, Titus Festus. Then okay. I have another native name, and uh, called Utomeno. Utomeno for my native language. It's all Ute my Utomeno. It's, it's it's getting to my tone. My tone don't reach the way we used to. Ah, I like that. <laughs> can, can you explain it a bit? So Utomeno means my turn don't reach. Like, it's, yeah. it's my turn now. Yeah, it's my turn now. Yeah. My turn that now. is a prophecy, isn't it? Uh, it's really a, a, a prophecy because anything I uh, do in life, I just do it out of my passion and I don't like uh, pursuing it as a do or die affair. And, and when okay. it gets to my turn, I know definitely it's my turn. So I do take it in the space that I work on in life. And that has really directed me so much. So, Wow. Wow. That's a prophetic name. Etermina means it's my turn. My turn don't come. For those of you who don't understand the pigeon from Nigeria, my turn don't come means it's my turn. <laughs> that is a good one so i'm going to put this on screen you made a very profound statement that's titus on the left hand side that's him on the right hand side is the tools that he uses uh, sorry about and that he, my, my home at, at the moment and my kids yeah. playing around yeah so titus, titus told me that he'll be joined by his kids he told me in advance yes. yeah. so don't be surprised if you see his kids about they are all uh, creative so if you see the creativity going on in the background then you know that titus has brought his whole team to join him today but let's go back to this saying you said that to everything there is a time and a season it is not time that flies it is not time that dies it is we that are flying and dying what did you mean by that profound statement in a nutshell what i'm saying is that everything on the everything on the uh, has a purpose on the surface of the earth and okay. we all have a time and a season there's time to play there's time to work there's time to die there's time to live there's time to be happy there's time to to have some soulful moments in your life yes. and the time everything has a time so what i'm saying is man we we have to wait for our time that's right it's not how the it's not how you how, how, how am i going to put it because what i'm saying in the world today people doesn't yeah. wait for their time true they do it in a rush they want quick money, rush quick this one quick that one that, there's a time for everybody on the surface of the earth. If only yes. we could be patient enough to wait for that time. It's all voice on, about how consistent and how uh, uh, patient we are. We are and patient in, yeah. in whatsoever we are doing. Definitely, That's your right. time will come. No, in thank you so much. I always choose to wait for my time. I That's don't right. make things. I don't force things to happen. If it mm. comes, it comes. If it doesn't come, as long as there is life, and I still, I still have that breath of life to see everyday morning light, I know whatever my dreams are, they will definitely come true someday. That is powerful. That is so profound. Because these days, you know, I, I would take it to, let's say, social media. Because we see so many other people doing so many things, we are in a rush to achieve what other people are achieving. And we don't follow our own life's purpose 
you know, everyone's life's purpose has got its own timing. We don't do so. We rush into doing things, and therefore things don't, don't get done properly. So I like what you've said, that you've got your own journey. You wait for your time. That doesn't mean that you're not taking action, but you don't really rush. Yes, but you're still taking action. Very profound. Very profound. So I've got Patrick, Patrick William Dodu, a good fan of yours saying, learn, hashtag learn, wait for your time. Very profound. Very profound. Thank you, Patrick. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now let, let's let's talk about your childhood and growing up in Lagos. You did grow up in Lagos, didn't you? Now, please. <laughs> you come again, please. <laughs> yeah, you, you did you did grow up in Lagos, didn't you? Yeah, 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 yeah. I grew up in Lagos, uh, precisely at Jegun okay. Lake. And, all right. Uh, that's where my father has his house. That's where we all brought and uh, bred up anyway. And despite living in, in the environment, there is still that parental upbringing which we developed from our parents. And our parents yes. nurtured it in us that despite the society we are living in, don't allow the society to control you. You have That's the true. real power, you have the power to control your society. But if mm -hmm. you give yourself to them, that's when you'll be washed away. You will never be yourself in the future. So with this upbringing, I decided to be myself in whatever I'm doing. And like I said, back to what I've said earlier, man, wait for your time. Your time will definitely be. So I don't envy nobody. I don't look uh, more than what my parents can afford at that particular point in time. Mm. We just contentment mm. with what we have, yeah. and uh, we do with with our availability, yeah. Mm. And that's and that's how we uh, live our life, and we live as one family. My uh, dad has uh, three boys. We are three boys and three girls in my family. Oh, okay, and okay. Uh, from one mother, so we six, and up right. to date, everyone still come together, talk, love each other, and that's the kind of upbringing our, our, um, my, uh, our parents handed over to that, us. That is the true essence of life, isn't it? Family life, making sure that you still bond uh, as a family. It was a big family. I mean, according to African standards, it's normal. Six, six is okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then you had a balance of, of, of uh, girls and boys. Yeah, and, and, yeah. And boys and, yeah. So we're, we're all of you creative people. No, I'll say my dad. It's it's a tech. It's a technician. He uh, he's he's very good in uh, technical drawing. Okay. So from the onset, he really wanted me to become an architect. Anyway, I can imagine the same role which he is doing, because yes. way back in the early seventies, in back home, uh, most of the people, most of the artists, then they end up in a little shop doing right. sign and posters and all those are. Uh, stuff of drawing in our neighborhood yes. and my dad doesn't want that kind of profession anyway so mm. he said okay if you could go to study architect then you could become somebody else something good in the future so but fortunately we had a family friend that that, that was an artist and okay. uh, a, a professional full-time studio artist and he's doing well in his career so okay that's really and my dad see that I was very good in drawing and I and I love and have that passion for the art. So he said, oh, yeah. definitely my son could uh, do better if someone we've known can live up with his profession and he's doing very, very well in the art industry. So definitely my son will do the same thing. So that's how I was fortunate to get fully into my art career. All right. Wow. Yeah. So you were quite lucky to have a, a role model very close by. Very that influenced you. Yes, 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 yes. So did you, even though you had someone as a role model, did you face any resistance? Did you face uh, challenges as you still pursued your career at, at that lot, young age? Did you have people telling you that, you know, that's not the right path? Ah. Uh Oh, I, you know, when someone is very creative from his tender age and within all your contemporaries at that point in time where you're small, they see you as very gifted and definitely they tend to encourage you. 
they tend mm. to think, oh, wow, this guy can uh, draw. We used to uh, draw on the on the on the on the sand, draw on the walls, draw on any platform we could lay our hands on. Isn't and, it? Uh, yeah. When yes. all the people see it, oh, that guy is very good in uh, drawing. They tend to encourage you, you know. That's right. But uh, however, if there's any challenges, I think I faced when I was a uh, little boy. I think it was for my own elder brother. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> because my mom was one of my number one fan then when i was a uh, right. boy still uh, growing up an, as an artist so i used to scribble on a piece of paper draw lion toxic animal and uh, show to my mom my mom said wow this, my son is fantastic okay right take this little change for your hand take this little coin okay. so that little stipend he used to give to me encouraged me a, a lot then you know that's right well, she doesn't know anything uh, about arts in any way, but that literally encouraged you. Encourages me to uh, forge ahead. But my That's elder it. brother was like, mm, "Mommy is giving <laughs> this small boy all the money I, I needed for myself." <laughs> so, That's it. <laughs> you know, those uh, little kid stuff and stuff like that. Yeah. So oh, yes. Oh, That's yes. how. But he. At a very long run, he is the one that pushed me up to this standard for now. So I must oh, give him a, an applause for that. Well done, older brother. You know, you, you yeah. encouraged Titus, and we are here with him right now. An international artist, very well known around the UK and abroad. You know, thank you so much for, thank you, mom, as well, for encouraging Titus. And now we are here talking about his art. So let, let's delve back into your secondary school days or your college days when you actually went to study art. Where did you actually um, study art? Yeah, I studied art in the Federal Polytechnic, Auchi, in Nigeria, okay. in those states. And, uh, but before I would get, uh, I delve into, into the art in my yeah. secondary school days, we call it secondary school back, back then. Yeah, that I, plays a role, isn't it? Yeah, I had an artist living okay. uh, close to my secondary okay. school right that uh, i was silly in my in my uh, teen then okay. i started not showing that passion for the art so whenever i i uh, finish school i do walk by going back home i do branch over to his studio and see what he's doing ah he is the first artist i saw using palette knife to paint and wow. so that's constant visiting to his studio, watching him doing his thing. And that's where I learned a lot about palette knife on my own. That's it. Because that's in it. Nigeria, if you want to study art, you want to learn art, sometimes you got to attach yourself towards somebody and there's a little stipend you, you will pay to the person and stuff like that's that. That's true. That's true. So you become an apprentice, isn't it? Yeah, you become an apprentice. But in my That's own it. way, when I when I was growing up as an as as a young lad, yeah, mm. I do most of my study and most of my learning with what I see. Okay. If I visit okay. your uh, studio, I have that uh, power of observation to really watch yeah. and focus on what you are doing. Mm -hmm. Then after which, I will go back home and see how I could manipulate in my own understanding in my own way that's how i develop myself in my art career so i do encourage young artists that one thing about learning the art is not about yeah, you on your own but it's better if you could observe the whosoever you want to be your mentor you yes. see him painting and you try to learn a lot from it i hardly asked questions then when i was a when I was in my team, because I was, I stuttered a lot and I have that oh, yes. information in terms of open communication. So okay. what I, what I just do is that I always observe myself. Observe. And that power of observation really takes me to the level of what I am today. So mm. his name, the artist's name is Seth. I, I do give credit to him because he's the first artist I saw using knife and that early stage of my of my uh, passion and that gives me that leap to become a palette knife artist as i grow up that's right so what, what's his name again so that if we need to follow him on facebook or somewhere yeah his name is seth ikusika seth ikusika okay yeah. for anybody that wants to go and find out who uh, inspired titus okay. it's seth ikusika and we will we'll, I'll, I'll check him out actually yeah 
Yes. Okay. And yes. another oh, artist yeah. again, the uh, that's my yeah. our our family friend. His name okay. is uh, Felix uh, Osiemi. There okay. was one time I visited him at his uh, when he was having a solo exhibition before he uh, left right. the uh, country way back home then. Then I said, "Oh, bro, I would like to paint like you. I would like to work under you. I would like to uh, see how you study, do. study, yes, or that yeah. movies, stuff like that." That's right. One question he asked me was that, "Do you want to be my disciple?" Oh, and that is it. it that and that turn, is a turn around. It turned around in my in my art career. I was like, "Oh my God! Why is somebody close to me telling me if I want to be a disciple?" I said, "I want to yeah. be under you and stuff like that." I wasn't really happy with them. I was not oh, anywhere, 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 but. As I grew up in my art career, I later realized what that was what he meant. my turning point. Yes. If not yes. today, I would have been painting like Felix Osiemi by name. I would have okay. been doing my art like him because I studied him and I would live a part, spend part of my career with him. Yeah. Right. So that's the world he says then. I think it's a it's a big bomb on my side. Yeah, it's really yeah. on me. It's really pushing me to the level which I am today. And I focus and I tell myself and now mm. I could have a uh, niche from for in, in the way I rendered my my uh, palette my in my work. That's right. right. How it's you know where I was. Time. Yeah. That's right. Okay, holy, so can you <laughs> Jaden, so th the kids want to be interviewed as well, isn't it? Okay, yeah. <laughs> can, can you let Uncle Uncle have a good time, and then whilst you have a good time in, on your own as well, I'll call you in when it's time. Okay, that's right. So Jayden? I think I'll interview them very briefly at some point. Okay, thank you very much. <laughs> so that they, they feel a part of the whole interview process. So okay. those of you watching us that are wondering what's in the background, uh, Titus told me he, his kids will be in the background. I said, that's fine. This is a family show. Let them be in the background. Let them feel free. It's all part of the creative process. But I remember when we were growing up, uh, you know, especially in African setting, children were seen and not heard. So whenever you touch something, put it down. Whenever you shout, keep quiet. So that really made us timid yeah. because we're always yes, being shouted at. Yes. And that's one thing that I would like parents of today. I'm not saying let your children lose all over the place, but at yes. least let them be comfortable in their homes. And that really unearths the creativity of, of these children. And one thing you said that is very profound is that wherever you went as a child, you observed. And then not only did you observe, you also practiced, but you practiced your own way. So yeah. whatever you learned, you, you turned it into your own style. That is really profound. And I want up and coming artists to really learn this and take it yeah. on board. Very, very profound. No, our homes here. Your homes to our house. All right, thank you. Right, so let's, moving on, let's talk about your, your days in, in college. Um, you did say that you... Um, actually studied art in college what, what yes. uh, college was that and or technical institution was that yeah i went to the federal polytechnic out in uh, in nigeria and i studied uh fine arts and uh, general arts and painting and general arts okay in my four years practice in the school and right in my first two years it was general arts you have to do with sculpture textiles ceramics and all other That's right, art forms. kinds of arts. No, but yeah. when we go to the uh, HND level, higher national no, diploma, no, then we focus on uh, a particular uh, no, subject and, uh, subject and I major in uh, yeah. painting. Right, right, yeah. right. So how, how was your experience there? Did that, would you say that that really gave you the, um, the tool set for who you've become today? Did that form a very important stage of your your artistic career. Yeah. See, one one other advice I got from my lecturer when I was at school, it's he uh, told me that the uh, school is just a uh, grooming ground for whatever you want to become in a uh, future. Okay. The most important thing is after school. Mm. So he was stressing that after school, how are you going to stage your art career? 
That's After right. school, how are you going to live your life as an artist? After yes. school, how are you going to make your mark in the mm -hmm. art world? After mm. school, how are you going to package yourself? That's right. So the the most uh, uh, important thing is after school. We've gotten yes. all the necessary tutelage and uh, on the study mm -hmm. ourselves as an artist. Because there's one thing yes. in a, in a school that's different uh, children, different uh, students from all over the world, all over the country, with that's different right. ideas meet mm -hmm. together, and that's when you start developing yourself. Ask questions mm -hmm. within each other. How do you do this? Yeah. What medium are you using? When you come about mm -hmm. this this medium, then that's how you uh, you uh, learn also from what your other colleagues brought down to school, brought down to school, and, and uh, an environment or from his own uh, wherever he has done his own uh, on the study, and yeah. so that's a vast knowledge you have to share and you have to understand. But after all this, you have to. No, define yourself after school. You have to. That's what my lecturer is telling me. You've gathered you all this, to. all this knowledge. The most important thing now, when you are out there, how are you going to package yourself? Very, very important. It's, yeah. The very, very uh, important. itself is never, never easy after school because mm. you you are going out there in the art market or art business, and you are, so there's a lot of living artists there already. Then. If you right. want to make your mark, you have to come out with something unique for yourself. That's how wow. I started. Yeah, that's how the so, Maya. So even at, yeah, yeah. At the point of studying, you had behind, you know, at the back of your mind, your teacher keeps kept saying after school, after school, after school. So that became like a mantra that you started thinking ahead of you ahead who you were going to become after school. That's amazing. That's amazing. So let's let's go to Facebook and take a few comments, greet a few people who've joined us. Uh, we've got Don Turner who's joined us. Uh, Tosin Oyenini has joined us. Hi, Tosin. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. Na Lamne Odate Lamte, Uncle Charles Thompson, Douglas Nemo, Nanette, Emifa Nanette, and Graciela Blackstone. Graciela says, and let me put Graciela's comment right up there. Our standing content, Eric. So excited to meet Mr. Titus Abara. So Titus, that's Graciela from Maryland, USA, saying hello to you. Uh, hello, Gracia. <laughs> great, 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 great. I want us to really delve into the work that you do uh, itself. I want us to see the actual pieces that you do. Um, so I'll, I'm going to bring a few things up. But before then, let me play the intro again. And whilst I bring these things up, just to make sure that people are ready to see your way. So welcome back to this exciting show where we're talking to Mr. Titus Agbara about his work, about his story, about his upbringing and art, African art in general. So Titus, we're going to talk about your work and I'm going to put a few up on the screen so that you tell us why you did what you did. So let's start from number one. This is a brilliant shot. I mean, the, the foreshortening, the perspective, the angle from which you actually got this painting done. Can you tell us what really inspired you? What is it all about? Yeah, the title of this work is called Food for Thought. Okay. But before I go into the work, uh, actually, there are certain process which I follow in terms of executing any piece of my work. Okay. I don't rush. I take things one after the other and time after the other. 
Right. And uh, I would like to say my uh, studio, it's where I live and it's my heart. And wherever I live, that's where my uh, studio is. What I'm saying this is that I don't want a uh, situation where you might, an inspiration might just come in and you decide to say, okay, until tomorrow when I get to the studio outside your your living area, that's when you have to put something on the canvas. True. So, it's an inspiration to me that whenever I'm working on a particular piece, it's like yeah. I have that 247 communication with the piece. Even That's when I'm right. at sleep, when I walk by within my own space, uh, space and where I uh, lived, so I have that continuous communication in terms of what I want to do, how I could get to do some other things to it to make it come yeah. out the way it is. Mm. This piece was taken, was taken from a photo shot. Okay. My another process of, of my uh, work is that I do go out to scout for my subject, and whenever I go, I have this my digital camera with me. Right. Anything that fascinates me the most that I thought about would be a, a very strong uh, concept. Without letting it go by, because this life is just like a uh, fleeting moment. You, more, you, you can't come to that particular thing anymore. So I just walk, I just have to do make use of my photograph and get a, a, a quick shot. Different varieties of shots. Then when I get back to the studio where I lived, then I have to see how I could manipulate those stuff to a perfect right. composition. So. This place was a visit in when I visited my country in Nigeria. It's the location. It's a place called was, the Universal Studio of Art. The Universal was, Studio of Art. I was losing you a little bit. You said uh, the internet was playing funny just a little bit. Okay. Can you repeat the very last sentence, please? Okay, let, sorry, babe. Okay, you didn't go down there. Play down there. Go there. Uh, yeah, what I'm saying, my process of my of my art in the making on the go through some kind of a mental and psychological thought. I see a concept and it fascinated me most. That something that have not been I haven't done before, and that's why I I do have a digital camera with me. I do take that constant shot of it, and when I go back to the studio, then I now recompose it that will suit the, the, all the terms of, an, of, of art in the painting. So this shot was taken at the famous Universal Studio of Art in uh, Nigeria. This lady served a lot of artists. Well, I mean, this is a, a, a very vast, big studio that comprises of painters, sculptures, ceramics, textile designers, and it's a it's located in the National Theatre region in uh, Lagos. So, and most of the artists, this is where they got the inspiration from. They got to eat from what the who, what the lady is cooking, and that is a source of inspiration to them. After a full day blown of work. They chill back, relax, got more inspiration and strength to continue with the work. That's 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 the that's where I uh, derived the uh, the title "Food for Thought." Food for thought come as a kind of a making process that has to uh, do with. I have my concept viewed from the top of the tree. There was a, a tree down there. The lady did not know what was going on. When I saw it, I said, okay, this could be a very good concept for me to paint. So I go up the tree, from the top of the tree, I take some candid shots, and that's amazing to me. Then back to my studio, I have a, then have to figure out how the shots could relate and interwoven into each other. So that's where I get the concept of food for talks, because it's a place where most of the artists do go to have their refreshments, they have their inspiration to keep, to cut that, that spirit of, 
of of uh, what am I going to say? <laughs> Keep them going on in their creative progress in life. Yeah, so it's a fascinating piece speaks to me. I really love it so much because it reminds me of way back and how it is spot in time where people used to go for inspiration and for rejuvenation of the strength to continue in the creative power. <laughs> uh, sorry everyone yeah this is also one of my famous artists uh she has an imprint in all of my works both of my kids whenever i'm walking they used to say oh daddy can you just have a play on it so okay introduce some colors to it and after which i'll just scribble it and finish up the painting in a way thank you you're still gonna call for an interview just relax and uh Cheers. Sorry about that. So pardon me, I'm back. Relax, relax. Right, so we can carry on. Do we? Forgive us. I lost the internet in my home completely. Can you imagine? Oh, but hey, we'll get all that sorted out. And um, when it goes on YouTube, we'll make sure we edit everything out. Um, right. So Titus, everyone could hear you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> but let's let's carry on. Let's carry on. Let's carry on with the artwork that you were talking about, and um, the artwork was to do with this piece. And you did talk, tell us that you take pictures as your reference image, and then you take it step by step. Yes. Nine, okay. Yeah. So basically, you you used the palette knife all the way through to achieve this piece. Is it? Yeah, my painting starts with a with a sketch, and uh, the sketch or that the outline or, or the work it comes up with uh, use the brush or a kind of I improvise some kind of uh, marker pencil tip, so I could use it okay. tip on the paint and do the sketch. My sketch right. is that uh, fabulous anyway, but the most important thing is the application of paint. Right on the canvas that's where i have to study it artistically and see how it goes on well proportionately okay so, yeah okay so that that's a really good angle and i can see that some of your works take the same um take on it where you are actually sketching from a very odd angle your paintings and from an artistic point of view I know a lot of artists struggle with this, where they need to achieve a lot of foreshortening. And you've mastered it so well. Um, what makes you actually take these very odd angles in your paintings? Yeah, art has been an ongoing process. And if you look back in the days, a lot of people have done a lot of justice to the arts. So yeah. in my present contemporary time which I lived on the surface of the earth I always visualize my art from a different angle something that mm. was like the uh that something that was strike the attention of people why did this artist take it from 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 this angle that's something right that that I see that oh you could you could view this from another kind of perspective a lot of people have been painting people sitting on a you know the face on type and yeah yeah but yeah on this uh other piece on the other side the uh the two other piece that shows uh a modern scene that they are sitting down yeah. and having some yeah. lunch after yeah. the work yeah yeah i we i was in london i was in uh, i went i just wanted to bought a uh, bus in uh, Trafalgar Square just at the bus I knew bar. I knew it was Trafalgar Square it looked very familiar yes <laughs> I just want to board the uh, bus from Trafalgar so like I always say I always carry my camera ahead of me that's it and, and uh, visualize my environment so I could see some con some striking concept that we never meet again and then okay. I'll take some photo shots so as I was waiting for for the bus I was I was just sitting at the platform on top of them, and I just decided to uh, look behind me. Right. Wow, this is a perfect scene for me. It just caught my imagination. I said, "Wow!" Then I just get up my my camera and just take some candid shots. And so fortunate right. the the the, uh, the boss is just there. Then I ran into That's the it. boss. After which. 
back to my in my in my studio i started having a thought about the, the the all the pics which i've taken off uh of both of them and and i yeah. decided to uh, go back again and take some odd shots and this okay. was the first shot which i took and it has given me rise to all the painting from the top view and wow. uh i've been working on them i've been developing on them and that's how i got fascinated with view on the top end people look at it people get to see it and say oh this painting really speaks for itself can you do something right. like that for me if you have any concept related to people from the top view i would like to have it oh so so eventually this became one of your top concepts that's uh, one of my top concepts and wow. i titled wow. it uh tete, tete a tete a french language that has to uh do it intimate discussion and like gossip yeah that's it. I never, I never knew what they were talking about. It okay. has to do with interracial discussion. I think so, isn't it? But that bond, that, that relationship between both of them, perhaps they might be coming from just having a uh, little nap after the uh, afternoon work, after the day's work, right. and we just have some little lunch, and I just love the scene myself. And, yeah. It's a, it's a brilliant piece. What about the one on the left hand side? Yeah, that one is back home, very close to where I was living in Lagos. My okay. un one of my uncle live in this abode. Mm. So his room is just just before the the door outside the uh, going outside to the backyard. Right. So this lady. It's one of the tenants in the uh, compound. So That's I was right. like, just coming down, and I just saw her. When, whenever you just go into the uh, front house, you have to yes. walk through the uh, passage, and okay. it's always dark. And before right. you see, there's light at the end of the uh, at the end of the uh, of, of the of the doorway, and it's all brightening up with figures and tints of activities. Right. So right. I decided, to, right. wow. So it's caught my imagination. So I said, no, I won't let this concept go by. I'll come back and see how I could work on it. Then I took some photo shots. She was just doing her, her, her thing with her yeah. daughter there. The uh, title goes what? Uh, as our mother told us. As our this, mother told us. As our mother told us. That's this right. Is a, of bond between the mother, mm -hmm. the, the 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 parents and the uh, and the uh, child. Okay. In Africa, there's okay. this relationship that's whatever kind of a uh, let me say, uh, if it has to do with uh, some uh, mini kind of trade your uh, parents does, they will like yeah. the uh, son to be part of it also. That's right. It's a family yeah. business. It's a kind of family yeah, business, but it's not that. really this in, in, in this scenario, it's not really a family business, it's a kind of inculcating whatever has to do with domestic work, domestic yes. training, yes. domestic or house bringing up to mm -hmm. us from the parents, laying that legacy to the child, to the child. So, to the you child. let me show the picture again, and I think you, you've really captured it brilliantly. Um, the lighting is so amazing. I, I feel like walking through the door myself because you've, it's so realistic. You know, the yeah. lights on the floor, hitting the floor really well, and the back of the people is being captured brilliantly well. And I think you've told the story really, really perfectly. Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> That's amazing. I'm going to move on to this one. And this one, oh, my goodness. I mean, when I was putting it on the slide, my wife just saw it and, said, and she said, oh, this is so amazing. The colors are so captivating. And she opened my eyes to something that I had never seen. I'll let you tell the story. Uh, this it's my life journey, my thoughts. Okay. My creation as a growing artist and as a living up from childhood to, to adults, to, to my teen, to... Uh, mm. To my to my adult stage, adolescent, and living my uh, life at full. Right. So, as I was growing up as an artist, 
so many clothes. How do you survive? How do you raise a, a, a family? But, but I don't have any doubt because I was here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, I'll talk to you later. I'm coming. So as I was growing up as an artist and I decided to become a full-time studio artist, yeah. So many things in life answer with you. How we live, just like what my lecture is after school. How we live, That's right. the, the whole scenario. Yeah. So so many imagination plus through my mind. That's what I yeah. developed this idea of making a uh, painting out of it. Okay. So I have that blossom gift as an artist. That is the roses. That's but it. you don't have to leave it or let them die. You have to not touch it and let them see blows. And in between the distant foliage and, and, and the trees, there is this, there is this uh, a notable uh, sculptural piece that was a thinker mm. by, mm. Uh, is it Rodney? Oh, yeah, the thinker. Yes. The thinker. Yes. 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 That's where I, I got one of the. Uh, so experts. everybody watching. Um, let's let's hope that the audience get to see what you're trying to describe because i didn't see it first time hidden in the foliage everybody watching can you can you see human figures within the foliage because not until my wife brought it to my attention this afternoon i hadn't seen it and i've seen this painting of yours on facebook for a very long time so it means you have hidden publications. Please tell us the story. On the left hand side, I can see the thinker on the very extreme left hand side. Yeah, let me just start from the uh, left hand side. But, okay. but it, it all centers on the uh, cloud itself. Those are ideas as a little baby when you come up to the world. You can see little babies. One has been held on the arm like this. And oh, the I can see that now. And. Uh, just on the left hand side and on the right hand side, there are kids playing unknown to them what their teacher holds, but definitely they have a brilliant future ahead of them. Mm. So it comes to when you become an adult as you're growing up in a teenager, that's when you started thinking about your uh, future, what you want to become. So many yeah. thoughts clustered in your head. But however, in terms of you see, have your own parental background to uh, bring yeah. you up. That is the man, and I've represented as an elderly man with a heart. Mm -hmm. There's a lot to to, to uh, do with African hearts when it comes to elders. You know, yeah. we don't joke with our heart. That's why I represent That's right. the next man to That's the right. team with a heart. That's where you got your upbringing, your inspiration, what you have to become, they have to guide you towards it. Then in the process of that, you move on to making up your own family. Okay. You could see okay. that it's a man and a woman and two kids above okay. on them in the middle of the painting. So let me see whether I can try and share a bigger picture because I want people to really appreciate what you're talking about. Uh, let's see whether I can share a screen here and then I will try and zoom into the area. Uh, let's see when it comes up and I'll try and zoom into the area. Uh, is the screen coming up? Uh, no, not at the moment. Okay, so I'm going to put this on screen now. Okay, Start the screen. okay. Right. Okay, and then I'll remove probably yourself. Is that what you were talking about? Okay. The child in the screen, in the sky. 
Yes, there's a child. Amazing. So I can see about two children, isn't it? There are two on, on, on the left playing, having okay. doesn't know what the future holds for them, but they are so optimistic that they have a parent or a guardian that will lead them up to the top. Okay. And uh, just like I said, starting from the left hand side, you can see the uh, tinker there. It's all yeah. about my own self as an artist, having a so talk in my life generally. Mm. Yes. And uh, by the side of the tinker, we have our parental background to really boost us up towards whatever nature or whatever aspiration we have in life or whatever okay. we're aspiring to be. And what, okay. what's the end of any man with life struggle has to do with his family, the wife, the husband, the man and the woman and the kids. But in this scenario, I have two kids at the top. I didn't think if that I did this before I get married, and now oh, okay. having two kids at the moment. <laughs> wow. <laughs> but but however, we we see how 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 it goes as an African man, you know. <laughs> Tell me about it. Happy, you know what I'm talking about. And, and even at this stage, you had a boy and a girl, isn't it? You've grown a boy and a girl. And a girl, so it's just a prophecy on my part, anyway. So right. But that's another part of life which I was thinking as I was making this painting. But on after that, on the other side of it, I uh, intend for 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 you to have this family, you have to have a wife, and you have to uh, go through some certain process that and, and engaging you and and she becoming one. That's what that's yes. the other last side is being. You could see a man and a woman. And the four legs, like he's holding up to the woman, and they were about passing some uh, impulse messages between the face of both of both faces are looking to each other. That has to do with the starting up of the family. Myself. Of family. So that's what yeah. we're talking about. This one. Yes. Yeah. Amazing. Amazing. No, the, 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 the next one. The next one. Oh, this one, rather. This one. Yes. You can so see this one, I can only see a woman, woman here. Is there a man in there? This is the man. There's, there's, there's a man towards, towards the right hand side. Yeah. That's it. Yes, that's it. That's it. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> that is really good. I'm going to stop sharing so that we can go back to our discussion. But okay. basically, what you've done is incredible. I mean, if you look at it from just picture sake you'll not be able to see the secret codes and the story behind it and that is the job of a good artist so i i, I believe that you've rendered it really beautifully but um have you always had this thought process as you create to to have hidden messages in your artwork uh my uh in my yeah. artwork what i try to uh to do it's so uh, it's it's all about my uh lifestyle and what i've seen from my environment my immediate and uh, environment from where i was uh, i was being born and uh, bred as an artist so mm. these are lifestyle and happenstance that comes and i try to share it but with a with a meaning to whatever picture you you uh, you see there's a message to it i'm just trying to pass not just painting the scene actually but True. the message True. relationship between the artist the work mm. and the message is trying to uh, pass to the audience yes so i got some other kids that had some other jobs too that has to uh do with what i'm with with, with, with what i'm with what i'm i'm saying and uh right. it has to uh do with uh bringing up your kids in a way okay I, okay I don't think i will have the, the painting down there but anyway that's just what my uh works are all are all about okay hearing the african stories in a way you have to see meaning to it in a way it impacts into life and caution our way of growing up as an as an individual as an artist Yes. Or an artist. Yeah. Yes. 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 No, that's great. So for anybody watching us now, if you have any questions for Titus, feel free to type it in the comment section. And definitely I'll be reading it out. Right now we've got Seth Clothe who has joined us. Hi, Seth. Hope you're doing well. We've got Comfort Abwaji Edu and so many others on YouTube as well. Hi, YouTubers. Hope you're doing well. But Titus is my guest today. And 
I want to spend the whole day here because his artwork tells so many stories. I'm going to show one more, uh, another one, and then we'll talk about that one before we move on to the next subject area. So this one is a typical London scene, but from a very good perspective, isn't it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> now, on the right-hand side, I intentionally put this detailed um, view over there for people to see, and I might share the screen again, just to zoom into that area for people to see what you've done to the artwork. Well, can you please tell us what is going on here? Yeah, it's still my life journey as an artist, or it's still my life journey as an artist. Like I said, all my okay. painting has to uh, do with the way I see the environment or how I relate to the environment. And I try to uh, create a scene to right. portray my uh, lifestyle or my thoughts or my feelings okay so have lived all my life most of my life in, uh, in nigeria before relocating to the united kingdom yes Shading. hold on a bit before relocating to the united kingdom and have lived as a full-time studio artist back home before okay. coming down to the uk i have a uh, uh, the dream Ever since I was growing up as a young artist, as a young boy, that I would love to become an international artist. But That's right. how that is going to be, it's none of my making. I just I just keep on doing what I ought to uh, do better. Yes. So, and I have never thought of having any other job as apart from being a full-time studio artist, which I've done right. ever since I, I graduated from school, 2000. And have been living as an artist for the, for seven good years before relocating to the uh, UK. All right. So on getting to the UK, I my elder brother that's that's have been my God sent brother anyway. <laughs> oh, that's that's beautiful. Yeah, I still keep on mentioning him in all. My you have to. You have to. Yeah, because uh, my first year he housed me. First and second year in the UK, no job, no yeah. nothing. I was still living as an artist, and it's very hard to get to break into the art scene. Only hold on a bit. Especially in London. Especially London, especially yeah. London. But I yeah. never give up because I love my passion as an artist, and I just mm. want to keep it up. It's, there's no other way, other places I have the joy as when I am in my studio producing my art. So, I came down to uh, to the UK. That's when mm. I started having that ambition of nurturing another job apart from yes. my art. And mm -hmm. I've never had that dream at all in life. So, so I got my uh, first job, and uh, all the while it's just keeping me away from my. It has giving me a little kind of deviate, deviation for my for my art actually. And I try to. Uh, make my, my, my lifestyle a way that I could still work and at the same time yeah. I have that time for my art. That's true. But it's very strenuous going for some other job outside and coming back, still having that time to paint. Energy. That yes. energy to paint. I still dedicate yeah. at least two to three hours before I'll finally go back to bed. Wow. And that has been my passion ever since. But in yeah. this process, whenever this is my main route to work to okay. my day-to-day -day work okay it's this area where i work in central london it's called um cambridge circles cambridge circuits okay cambridge circuits so it's it's a junction where all other bus from all other angles have come to meet so i'm Amazing. actually in this bus okay. when i have that thought flow about my life generally wow i say wow what am i doing in london as an artist wow. I'm not living the way I'm supposed to uh, live in Nigeria. All my thoughts and everything is, is, is mm. this the end of it? No way. Mm -hmm. I have two thoughts going in, in me. In the in the uh, UK, as, yeah, uh, as yes, now, um, I have some other jobs to do. And yeah. I'm still an artist. Mm -hmm. And that's why I see this. the title of this painting is called... Uh, Cambridge circles where thought okay. meets because whenever I'm in the bus, I do have that thought of no, I would love to be a full-time artist once again. 
That's right. Not go, not taking myself out of my studio, going for all the jobs. And when I come back, I still have that input into my painting. It's not as strong as I used to be when, when I was a full-time artist. Yes. So that thought leads me to creating this piece. It's all about my uh, journey in the uh, UK, what I was mm. going to as an artist, still living my, still nurturing my uh, dream as an artist, and also yes. having a day-to-day -day job to keep me going on. That's true. But however, you will never give up in life. Just keep on doing what you ought to do. Mm. So the scene is about the London scene, but I have to inco inco incorporate the African motifs into it as a talk of where I'm coming from. That's right. And, oh, and for the viewers, if you can pay real attention, that's why I keep zooming in. Um, on the yellow rails and in the background, you can see there's a lot of African motifs beautifully crafted in into the designs. And that's what I wanted all of us to pay attention to. Um, the beautiful piece in its own, but the detail and the message that Titus is talking about right now, the African motifs. Please carry on. Yeah, it's all about two thoughts. So I, I don't just want to leave it as a uh, painting of, of an uh, European scene, but also a thought that goes through me when I was doing this painting. It's all about mm. my African state of mind way back home. How am I going to get back to it? Yes. So yes. that's how I just have to express myself in this painting. And that has beautifully been expressed in this painting and it's turned out so well. The, the two cultures merged and fused into one painting, uh, still delivering the message of, you know, a London with your African upbringing in this special painting. So there, you've, you've done it brilliantly well. And thank you for that. I'm going to uh, show another painting of yours. And this one more is to do with... Uh, where, where did you take this one from? Is it Accra? It's in uh, Accra. It's, it's, <laughs> there's a town of uh, called uh, Labadi. Along Labadi, the, uh, yes, yes, yes. yes. They've got a beach over there, Labadi Beach. Labadi Beach. Yes, That's it. The, yeah. Oh. Very well captured. Very well captured. So what was the story? What, what yeah, made was, you pick this I, one? I was fortunate to have a... a uh, a cross-cultural uh, cross-cultural relationship between Ghana and, Ni and Nigeria under the Ford Foundation was sponsored by the Ford Foundation. So I was taken to uh, Ghana for a three months on the study with okay. an young artist under Ablade Glover. Oh, and that, I mean that is that is our hero. When you yes. talk about art in yes, Ghana, yes, yeah. Abla de Glover is the man. So you studied under Abla de Glover? Yes, I was with, I, I live on with him for the first week I was in uh, wow. Ghana. He hosted us, he hosted me and the other artists from, from, from uh, Nigeria. Then he now relocated us to Omanye House where he has his, 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 his uh, old gallery, the first That's gallery. right, that's correct. Yeah, because in in La, where I where I uh, got this pictorial composition, it's where he is having his uh, new gallery. Okay. The uh, what's yeah the the uh, new uh, near, near the seaside yes Alliance Al gallery. Alliance Frances yes Alliance yeah, gallery gallery yeah that's, that's it that was in uh, two thousand and six late two thousand and six yeah. that was when I was in Ghana. So on visiting to uh, Ghana as an as I love going around with my digital cameras, sourcing for concept and scene to paint. Just yes. by the main gallery there in, in La, by the beach, that's where I got this concept. I've made a lot of paintings from, from that light. That's right. And it's a beautiful, beautiful capture of daily fashion, you know, life around, around the beach in, in Accra. Around, around the beach, yeah. Have that's amazing. Little, uh, composition that has to do with the La village itself and I still have okay. some some pictorial composition which I'm still looking ahead of painting some other wow. mass area view of La itself so wow. but that will be coming up no that's time. great so the lesson the lesson that I'm getting and probably everyone that's watching is getting is you don't just take the pictures and leave them once you finish with one painting you sometimes revisit them 
to compose other sceneries out of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. And That's these amazing. are real shots from my own collection, not That's it. from the picture. Not, not from Google, not no. from the internet. No, no, no. <laughs> like, my, like myself, as an artist, I love going to that scene and okay. seeing whatever I want to paint myself. That's it. I That's love it. interacting with the environment. I love being yes. in the environment, get myself immersed in it and see, it. get that uh, intimate contact. Intimate with relationship, relationship with that environment. With the environment. And yeah. as I go on scouting for my image, then I see real thing that I could really want to depict. That's, That's it. Handing for me. That's how I, I do Yeah. Brilliant. And I suppose this one is also from the beach, is it? No, uh, this one uh, was taken from not from the it's from the uh, UK beach, one of somewhere okay. in Kent. Okay. In, uh, Mark Mark's Gate. Margate, yes. Uh, Margate, somewhere yes. In, uh, by yes. the riverside in uh, in uh, Margate. I went for the Sky uh, Landscape Artist of the Year competition, so I okay. lodged there. I was being lodged in one of the hotels there, so I decided to uh, go around on the beach. Okay. So I was on the uh, beach on the part on that particular day, and what comes to my mind was the relationship between home, the distance in the relationship in terms of the distance between home and where I was at that particular time. Mm. But what's going in my mind? It's uh, most is the uh, most of the people we've lost in in the process of looking for a greener pasture greener yeah. pastures that's true yeah mm. that's what comes out of my mind and i titled the the, uh, the painting save them before they die wow because a lot of africans have risked their life going through the sea in terms of where they could find security prosperity and, and safety to them that's true and most true. of them have died along the sea. Most of that's, them, that's the they, they, you, you, yeah. you could see them on the news of a lot of them going on boats, little boats, all the way from Africa, crossing the, is it the Atlantic or the Mediterranean, or which ocean? Yeah, yeah, just to get to Europe. To Europe. And, then, and, then, and then some other people, you think, go through the desert. I mean, yeah, just go to through get the there. desert. So yes. this, this yes. particular piece is dedicated to all the life we lost mm. Mm. that couldn't make it to the to the shore where 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 where, where they could point ahead of of the future. You could see a little reflection down there. Okay, it's all right. No worry. You could see the uh, the uh, reflection of my own image. That that was me. Okay. Yeah. When the water washed back, but this, 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 my hands was pointing ahead. That there's a bright feature ahead. Ahead. That's those, true. it's it's a kind of inspiration for uh, those people that if they could be able to get to the shores of this country, they are safe. Then they, they are they safe. Have bright feature ahead. But anyway, it's something that we could work out. Mm. Those people that has to go through the stone way, those people that has to go through the sea, through the, the desert, there's a lot to to, uh, to do in terms of immigration uh, content anyway. But I leave that it is to very well true. Into it. Certainly, mm. certainly, certainly. Now let's move on to your journey. So you came here in 2007. Yeah, my and yes, and then let's say uh, less than 10 years down the line, we see you on TV. Actually, 20, 2014, 2015, 2016, 2020, you were partaking in, you know, huge sky art competitions. And I'm like, wow, Titus is doing really good. What gave you the courage to enter into the sky arts program? The first of all, the first one was Sky Arts Portrait Award, wasn't it? Yeah, Portrait. Uh, yeah, portrait. In, in 2014. 2014, yeah. What encouraged you to take that bold step? To enter into this national or even I would say international, you know, art competition. Yeah, like I said, back home, have have done not have have been nurturing that dream of becoming an international mm. artist. Mm -hmm. And back home, there is this uh, because when my uh, brother was in the UK, he he does uh, subscribe for this international artist magazine for me. And okay, and over the years when I was back home, I do send entries for, for the right. competition on the on the on the uh, book there okay but unfortunately i wasn't able to uh, get through 
into yes. one of the selected piece or 10 finalists until mm. when I find myself in the uh, UK. Yes. So that passion and that drive and that restlessness of becoming what I am. But okay. however, how are you going to become it? But if you keep on doing whatever you do, mm. no matter the challenges in life and one, whatever. So fortunate for me, I met Ade Banji Alade. Hey, <laughs> Ade Banji is my mentor, I'm telling you. And that's something. <laughs> so he now said, man, you have to go in. in, in there's a lot of submission for, for, for the art and how you could yeah. get the art out, out, uh, out, out, out there. Mm. So he sent me some entries in the, the one in the mall galleries, all the yes. stuff there, all the artists, right. portraits, pastel. Yes. Landscape, Royal Color of Institute, Wildlife, Royal. all that. It, it, it yeah. had different, different aspects. Yes. Different aspects. So, and and uh, I have one uh, Ghanaian friend too. We always work together hand in hand as an artist. Edward? So, Edward Ofosu. <laughs> oh, that's my very good friend. Edward Ofosu is a good yeah. friend. Yes. Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. We always work. work uh, Edward is back in Ghana now. We do go out for landscape, outdoor paintings. Okay. Uh, the Notting Hill uh, uh, carnival. Carnival, and yes. It, it, we sold paintings over there. That's wow. going on. And that's it. Yeah, we do go outdoors on our own just to choose a location. We do go together to paint. That's amazing. Yeah. So I decided to take that bold step of okay, uh, if Mo if Mohammed did not go to the mountain, the mountain would then go. The mountain to must go to Mohammed. That's so it. To take this bold step to get into this. Uh, these shows, most of those are shows which he sent to me, and that's where, yeah, that's where I I see how I could get my art into the uh, mainstream. That's right. I was so fortunate. The my uh, first piece was was a uh, scene from Africa, and I was so fortunate that the uh, judges relate to it, and they called me. Ooh. Wow! I was like, wow. Even though it's a scene from Africa. Even though it's a scene from Africa, I was thinking I have to start painting uh Western, I have to Western change my, my uh, concept and start yeah. painting there because I've also uh sending some entries in the mall gallery. Okay. For this year annual uh, uh exhibition. Exhibition and most of the scene there was I was still painting my African scene and stuff like that. But Obviously. sometimes I was rejected, but that was not the end of it. That's it. But they say, oh, are you the guy that did such a work? When I get to collect my work, oh, that work was fantastic. We haven't seen such like that. But wow. that alone, it's keep on doing what you it know. It encourages you. That encourages me. Yes. So until I was so fortunate to, to uh, get into the mall gallery twice. And, and was, was like, wow, you just came to the UK and you started getting your works into the mall gallery. Into the mall gallery, yeah. 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 I'd say I just submit. I just do what I want to do, and I submitted a piece. And so fortunate, it's getting. It's not out of my own making. But the judges at that particular time, they, they see, they they find it. In, they find it. Uh, it gets to the work, yeah. and they have yeah. to select it for the exhibition. That's how right. I was fortunate to uh, go in, and I give all glory to God anyway. And that's how most of these are uh, magazines, arts. Uh, magazines they start writing about oh, can we get your profile i would love your your piece can we write about you now in our magazine yeah i said wow what i've been doing all the way back home now i'm here and i just get on the platter of uh, good now and, and that is your name isn't it it's your time your turn don't it's come time. yeah it yeah come and, oh, that's my time when your time that's comes, it. yeah it's just yes Keep on rolling off for, for uh, you like that. So I thank you. I'm just going to show a picture of you um, on the Sky Arts program, and then we'll talk a bit more about it. Uh, okay. So that that's you over there. Credit to Sky Arts, uh, standing in in line. Does it bring back memories? Which yeah, one was this one? Yeah, yeah, that was the uh, African piece I did 2016. That piece gets me into the landscape artist of the year 2016 wow so guys yeah. if you didn't see it before this is the piece that we showed yeah. earlier on and that is the one that he's holding right here on the left hand side so that's what got him into the landscape artist of the year brilliant 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 so your story that you told that your imagination of you know how you're going to continue being an artist you know got you into this competition yes amazing Amazing. And on the right hand side, which one was this one? Yeah, it was the uh, final uh, judge's uh, decision. This was the portrait artist of the year 2020. 
Okay. Yeah, the one okay. I uh, did with me and my uh, daughter gets me yes. into it. Right. Yeah. So I'm going to show that as well for the benefit of people who haven't seen it before. This is a beautiful painting that he did of him and his daughter. Um, I was going to present this at the very last for you to bring your daughter in for us to see how oh, old she has grown. Um, but yeah, <laughs> let, let's bring her right now. So this is okay. you and your daughter. What made you What made you paint this one? Yeah, it's still my uh, journey. General, <laughs> uh, still my journey. That's, that's beautiful, daughter over there. Hello, say hello to everyone. Hello. Ah, yeah, she's part of my artistic journey anyway because that's right when i'm whenever i'm uh, making a a uh, painting she always say daddy can i use some colors on it can i play some <laughs> colors i said okay it's you 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 are free to use any color on it so that's she right said, don't take the knife put any color put on it i'll just yes. no, no, no not that this other way that's right it goes to this this one goes to that thank you very much uh quite wow them then in all, then I'll finish up the work. Then most of my That's work, she, she used, she has a, an imprint on them. Input into so it. It's not just all, only me doing my work. It's just two artists, two in one piece. Amazing. So that's <laughs> one secret right there. We've got yeah. a brilliant artist in the background who also inputs into your work. And it turns out beautifully yes. into things like these ones. Yes. Amazing. <laughs> Amazing. Was, Amazing. She was still a uh, little baby. I titled yeah. this work, Earth Song. Because okay. what I say Ed song was if you listen to the lyrics of uh, Michael Jackson. Yes. Yeah, it's it's all about asking questions. What have we done to the world? Look That's true. Died, look at what is going on. Look at mm. it's just about securing a a better place for our children. That's it. And when I started having kids and this thought goes in right in, in within my own imagination amazing amazing and this is a, a brilliant piece that tells the father and daughter bonding story and i can still see the african symbols in the background you know as the foliage of the flowers fall the the streams of african symbols right there um can you tell us why you keep fusing african symbols into contemporary uh western style paintings yeah yeah yes you, you, there's no place. If I was there's this they're saying, I said, there's no place like home. You can't that's run it. from your identity. That's there's it. no way. That's where you uh, started from. I've lived yes. in Africa. That's where I, I went to school. That's why I, I started my art career. That's why yes. I started uh, representing myself in, in my artistic representation. And yeah. definitely, that bond still keeps me going on. I don't want to lose where I come from. So mm. most of my piece, I still try to see how I could relate to my original place of birth and to my That's immediate good. place of environment. I still Very well said. Very good. well said. And especially as an African artist, we should always be connected to our roots. Wow. That's where we began. That's yeah. where we began. Let's go back to the Sky Arts program. And now I can see that, you know, your name is all over the place. You are in cast, cast art magazines. You are an artist and illustrator. Uh, you are the, in the Guardian. How does that make you feel when you reflect back from where you started till now? <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, you, like I said, I always nurture a, uh, a, a dream. And it's not out of my making how the uh, dream is just materializing or coming up to be. It mm. all takes the uh, grace of God and me being consistent right. in the practice. That's right. And I'm um, saying this, I always say, oh, you have a uh, dream way back and this is how it comes to be. Don't force into it. Don't rush into it. And yes. if it takes me more time to get where I just want to be, that's where mm -hmm. I just want, that's the time. That's why I said in that my artist statement, there is a time and a season for everything on the surface of the earth. That's correct. So I always tell young folks that wait for your time. But in the process of, of, of waiting, they say, heaven help those who help themselves. Don't just That's hold right. your Faith without yes. work is dead. You have it's to dead. work for it. You have to work for it to show Profound. when the time comes up. Brilliant. So, brilliant, brilliant saying. I mean, Titus, it's been such a pleasure. Um, if people want to see your work, where do they actually go? 
Do you have your Instagram handles, your Facebook handles? I'm going to put them up because you gave them to me earlier. But mm -hmm. if you can mention them, and then people uh, will follow you. Okay. My Instagram, it's uh, Titus Agbara. That's right. And, and uh, but the same thing on my, on my Facebook page, still my same name, Titus Agbara. Okay. And in my Twitter also, it's still the same name, Titus Agbara. So if you want to get down to me, when you Google the name Titus Agbara, you could see a lot about me and how you could find me up. Great, and fantastic. Have, uh, a website that's linked to uh, www.titusagbara.wix.com slash Titus hyphen Agbara. That's where you see some of my uh, works. And if you want to buy or purchase any of my works, you can go to the Sachi Online, Sachi Art Online. Sachi Art Online. Yeah, that's where you see pricing of my artwork. And if you want to purchase it, you can send me amazing a amazing amazing it's been such a pleasure speaking to you today and i know we haven't finished the conversation yet so maybe in the near future i will book for part two if you don't mind so that we can actually tell the story a bit more <laughs> thank you very much Eric. thank you thank you so much. much god bless you yes bye bye we'll bye -bye. speak later god bless you bye thank you very much bye <laughs> So, guys, it's been so much of a pleasure bringing Titus our way today. He has given us so much insight into his work. So follow him on Instagram, on Facebook, on Twitter. Make sure I'm putting the link back up again. Make sure that you follow Titus on Titus Agbara on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, wherever. And if you need a piece of his artwork, communicate with him directly so that you can get a piece of his brilliant artwork. He is such a gem to our generation and everybody should look up to such a perfect gentleman uh, when it comes to art. So for those of you who want to hear more about these interviews, which I've been doing for quite a long time, uh, go to my, my YouTube channel, and I'm going to put the link up there. Make sure you do subscribe to that YouTube channel and make sure that when there is any update, because I've got a series of interviews that I've done since 2020, and we've got various artists from the African continent as well as Africans in the diaspora telling us about their story. Make sure that you go there, play through the playlist, subscribe to the channel, press on the notification button so that each time I load up a new video, you'll be well notified. So there we go. There we go right there. But thank you so much. Thank you so, so much for this afternoon. Uh, wherever in, you are in the world, if you're going to watch the replay too, comment in the comment box that you're watching from the replay. God bless you so much. And I'm going to just sign out, but have a really uh, good day. Have a brilliant week ahead of you. God bless you.